Come on, clap those sanctified hands, y'all. Come on, if the Holy Ghost ain't here, man, you, man, something's wrong with you today. Come on. I can feel the presence of God. Somebody shout just the power of his presence. Touch your neighbor and shout it's the power of his presence. Okay, touch the other neighbor tell him it's the power of his presence. And wherever the power of his presence is, yokes are destroyed. Come on, chains are broken. Minds are set free. Hearts are healed. People can see again. Touch your neighbor shout I can see again. Listen, you got to understand the only reason why I can see again because of the presence of God. Woo! Hallelujah. My God, my God. This is what, this is what church is about. Church is, it's not about a traditional thing. It's about where is God moving? How many of y'all will say that God is moving? Can feel, it's, that's why I love coming to church week after week because I don't ever know what God going to do. I don't even want to miss a moment in his presence because I just don't know what he's going to do. God told me, y'all, he said that, y'all remember last week we talked about sanctification. And we talked about sanctification meaning that I've been set apart. I'm not like I used to be. I don't think the same. I don't walk the same. I don't act the same. Things are just different. And God told me to tell y'all today that he sanctified you so that he can make room for more. Oh my God. Somebody shout, God, go ahead and make room for more. Come on, somebody shout, God, I want more of you. Come on, I want more of your power. Come on, I want more of your peace. Come on, I want more of your joy. Anybody in the building that want more of God? It's interesting, it's interesting, it's, it's, it's really interesting because one of the things you got to remember about when you want to make, um, when God wants to make, wait a minute, when God wants you to make more room for him, the first thing you got to do is you got to first make time for him. Yes, yes. Come on, if you ever want to see God move, you somebody shout, I got to make time for God. I got to make time for you, God. You got to make time for him. I was driving, here go my message right here on a piece of paper. Let me tell y'all something. Sometimes God will catch you in the car and you have to tear off a piece of McDonald paper and start pulling over to the side of the road and just say, God, what are you saying? I to speak to y'all today that God getting ready to speak to you in some unusual places at some unusual time and I got my three points on a piece of torn paper come on up in here and sometimes God will do it when you leave somebody shout God getting ready to do it when you don't even expect it God told me he said now I'm going to make room for more if you would surrender there it is. That's, that's the point. I didn't get you. God said, I will make room for more if you surrender. But what you got to do, you got to make time to make room for God. Right. I, I make time for... Y'all know that song, yeah? <laughs> Y'all know I'm already preaching. Y'all do know that, right? Y'all know I already gave you one point. You got to make time to make room. Y'all ever had a boyfriend? You, you know the husband you got... Before you married him, y'all had to make time. Some of y'all got boyfriends and girlfriends, but you had to make time before they became a boyfriend or a girlfriend. That's right. Come on, talk back to me. That's right. Talk back to pastor. Y'all can sit down. Y'all can, can be seated. Thank y'all. I'm just going to go right on in. <laughs> it's children's church time, y'all. Come on, clap your hands for all the kids as they go downstairs for children's church. I thank God for our leaders, amen, and what they are doing with our children downstairs. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I, okay, let, let me, I didn't got all excited, y'all. You know, sometimes when you just get in God's presence, you just get excited. God will make you tear up the, the agenda that you got on your you know, what you all got all wrote down and all that kind of stuff and neatly done, typed and everything. And here I am to done all this work, put it in my tablet. Then he decided he want to tell me something on the way to church. <laughs> then I'm scrambling in the car. <laughs> Couldn't find no paper, nothing. So I just had a towel bag that I had from last night. Write down the message. Somebody might be saying whether you're online or in the building, you might be saying, well, he didn't even study for that one. Well, I think I did. 
Because your study is your life. Because if I don't make time for him, then I won't make room for him. So uh, let, 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 let's get into something. Somebody shout, make room for more. So you got this your hour now in your sanctification. You got to make room for more. Where my timer at, Rodney? Amen. So we're going we to go on and get through this thing. All right. So let me give y'all a scripture in the book of Le Leviticus, chapter 26. Leviticus is Old Testament. And I'm going to show y'all something. Then we're going to go on to go home. So God said, be ye separate. He said to be sanctified. So that means now that I'm sanctified, that means that that sanctification has some power to help me see things better and to help me change. All right. I believe that just this morning that the glory fell in this room. And I believe the glory fell on me. And somebody shout, I believe the glory fell on me. And being that the glory fell on me and you, that means the glory is filled the building. Come on, y'all. And so then what we experienced was a ladder house anointing. Remember what the Bible says that your ladder house will be greater than your former house. How many of y'all feel better now than you did before you got to church? Come on up in here. You may have struggled on your way, but I feel different now. Why? Because my latter house is greater than my former house. Why? Because the glory fell. That's why I'm like missing church. Because, see, you can't say the glory going to fall this Sunday. Or the glory going to fall this moment. No, the glory going to fall all the time is in my, in my mind. So I just don't want to miss it. Somebody said, I just don't want to miss the glory. Falling in the building. God told me to tell y'all that there's some tables he's about to put you at that you don't even deserve to be at. But simply because of my favor on your life, I'm going to set you up. <laughs> God told me to tell y'all, I done already RSVP'd you before they VIP'd you. <laughs> and and you t they trying to figure out why they calling you to uh, uh, get you on, on, on at the table. It's because God done al already RSVP'd you. <laughs> Y'all are catching on your way home. When you said yes to God, God said, this is the moment. Now I'll set you up for more. This might be for about 10 of y'all in the building, but uh, I believe that I'm in my, my season of holiness, purification, and consecration. I just believe I'm in that. I told you that's one. I got one of 10. <laughs> I believe. Thank you for that one. I believe that I'm in a season of purification, consecration, and holiness. And see, you're going to lose some friends when you get purified, holy, and consecrated. Everybody don't want to hang around people that smell good all the time. Come on. Come on. I ain't even got to wear cologne no more. I just know I smell good. Come on. Because I feel like the anointing is upon your life. <laughs> somebody shout the anointing. Now, just, just in case somebody doesn't know what the word anointing means, that word anointing means ability. That means God is giving you this anointing or this ability to worship him or to praise him or to call out his name or to operate in the talent and the gifts that he's given you. So now I have the anointing. Ooh, somebody said I got the anointing. Say it again. I got the anointing. Remember what the anointing word means? It means I have the ability. I've been reading the word too long not to have the ability to cast out a demon. Come on. I've been too faithful to God not to be able to tell this demon, you got to flee and get up out of here. Is there anybody in here who will call themselves a demon slayer? Because we're in an hour now. You got to slay some demons because these jokers showing up in your children, showing up in your house. Come on, showing up in the church. But if there's some demon slayers in there, you're going to have less and less demons around you. Somebody said, I'm a demon slayer. 
Okay. All right. So we 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 talking. <laughs> we 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 talking. Uh, so I've already been RSVP. So verse six, Leviticus twenty six. I like the sound. Keep it coming. I like it. I will give peace in the land, and you shall lie down, and none will make you afraid. I will rid the land of evil beasts, and the sword will not go through your land. Somebody shout, my land. <laughs> um, and then it goes, you will chase your enemies. Uh oh, that, that's, somebody shout, there's a shift. See, a lot of times we be running from our enemies. God said, no, you finna chase them out your house, out your life, out your mind. Somebody said, I'm chasing them. See, y'all got to understand, God is reversing the curse. And he's saying, listen, instead of you running from your problems, you need to run right into your problems. Because your problems have got to know who you are. You're going to chase down your enemies. And they shall fall by the sword before you. Now, what's the sword? The word of God. So you can't go fighting enemies with your mouth of cuss words <laughs> about what hurt you and who hurt you. And you want to kick over chairs and kick down buildings. Now, give them the word. The word will sustain you when you're going through. <laughs> is that making sense, y'all? Watch it. Here it is. Here it is. Five of you shall chase a hundred, and a hundred of you shall put 10,000 to flight. If I can at least get a hundred of y'all to come in agreement with me and the word of God, then look at how many we can chase away when it's just a, a thousand of us. 10,000 demons got to flee. Give me five people that don't mind letting God know, God, you can use me as you please. Because if I got five of y'all, we can at least get a hundred at a time. But baby, if I got a thousand of you, we can get 10,000 to flee. Somebody shout, don't be scared to get used by God. Y'all write that down in your notes. Don't be scared to get used by God. No. This is not the season to be afraid to be used by God. Because you about to put some enemies to flight. That's why you got to watch your inner circle. Because you need to have an inner circle of prayer warriors. Because those prayer warriors can cause doors to open and doors to close. Come on here. Your endless, he said, your enemy shall fall by the sword before you. The next verse goes on. Here it is. For I will look on you favorably and make you fruitful, multiply you, and confirm my covenant with you. Listen, let's stop right there for a moment. Let's just, listen, look at what God going to do for you. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, let's read what God going to do for you. For I will look on you how? Oh, no, I didn't mean for y'all to report that. <laughs> but that's how y'all did it. But how is God, look, he said, for I will look upon you. How is he going to look upon you? Favorably. Okay, so let's look at that word favorably. That means that word favorably also is connected to the word grace. I'm going to give you what you don't deserve. Simply because of your obedience to me. Y'all ain't saying nothing in here. I know I got too many perfect people in the building. But for those people that ain't perfect and will say, God, I did mess up that one time. And you did give me some grace. And I say thank you for it. Is there anybody in the building ever been in a place? You know you you might wear a collar. You might have on a suit. You might drive a fancy car. But you know you done jacked up once or twice. And God still showed you favor. Look at your neighbor and shout. You look at that person walking in favor. Woo! Come on, y'all, y'all, come on, y'all. Don't y'all get too, don't y'all get too cute on me in here. Now look what he gonna do. He said, I'm gonna look, Tracy, watch it. He said, I'm gonna look upon you favorably. And then he didn't put a period there. He said, and. And make you what? Ooh. How many of y'all got businesses in here? And see, if you just serving God the right way, God said, I'm going to make that business even more fruitful in the next 30 days. Come on up in here. I've been praying for people to show up that's going to pour into my business. And God said, because of your obedience and the favor I got up on your life, I'm going to make it fruitful. Whew. Listen, he said, I'm going to make you fruitful, multiply you. He didn't say add. 
He said like three times three. Not three plus three. Y'all, y'all get this in a minute. Three plus three is six. But three times three is what? Three. Somebody shout multiply. And then watch this. Check it out what he going to do for y'all. I'm almost through y'all. Look, watch this, Jarvis. He said now, now go back. He said now, he said, now I'm going to multiply you and confirm my covenant. Now, look, watch what, now, now listen, y'all. That's why in this season, you got to be careful who you in covenant with. Because some covenants that you may be in may not be a good covenant. But God says, I'm going to confirm my covenant. I'm going to confirm my servant. I'm going to uh, confirm your faithfulness. I'm going to confirm your giving. I'm going to confirm it. And when God confirms it, that it means that no weapon. Somebody shout, I've been confirmed by God. And that's why I am where I am today. Because God has confirmed me according to his covenant word. Hallelujah. Okay, so, all right, so, okay, what's the next verse, Stacy? So, you shall eat the old harvest and clear out the barn because of the new. <laughs> yeah, any, anybody ever had, Tracy, watch this, watch this, Karen. It's been times in our life that y'all get to a place where y'all clearing things out because of summertime. Then you get rid of the summer clothes and put the winter clothes in the closet and, you know, and all that kind of stuff. And then you, you put it on and it's too, it just don't look the same, don't feel the same on you. So you ready to give it away? I come to tell y'all that you in the season, God says that it's time to clear out the old. Because the new is on the way. Come on up in here. You, if you don't get rid of that old mindset, them old habits, you won't be able to receive the covenant blessings that's coming your way. But you have got to get rid of the old. Somebody shall get rid of the old. Okay, y'all get ready to repeat this after me. Follow pastor right now. Say, Father God, I get rid of my old mindset, my old habits, my old thoughts, my old attitude. And I ask you, God, Give me a new mind. Give me a new heart. And give me a new step. In Jesus' name, clap your hands and give God praise. Okay. All right. So, all right. Uh, let, let, let me read this in the New Living Translation. Y'all check this out. Listen to it for a minute. I will give you peace in the land. And you will be able to sleep. With no cause of fear. <laughs> Somebody lift your hands. Lift your hands right now. And say, Father God, thank you for peaceful sleep. I will stop worrying, having anxiety about stuff. In Jesus' name. Now clap your sanctified hands and give God praise. Come on. Been worrying. Can't even sleep at night. Trying to take no dough. I mean, taking... You did what I be doing sometimes. I be so exhausted. I take night quill. Some of you try to take night quill and stuff because you're worried. Just ain't sleeping. God said today you're going to sleep tonight. <laughs> Nudge your neighbor shout, you're going to sleep tonight. <laughs> yeah, the reason why you're going to sleep tonight because all of us declare a thing in this atmosphere. And if you even online, you're going to sleep tonight. If you're in the building, I know you're going to sleep tonight. I ain't going to worry. I ain't going to have anxiety. Listen, I'm going to let all my supplication be known unto God. Shoot, man, I'm tired of worry. <laughs> tired of worrying. Because what does worry do? It just stress you out, don't it? Put you on medicine. I'm tired of medicine. I got a medicine man. <laughs> His name Jesus. He said, all y'all do is call me. I'll drop down from heaven anything that you need. Come on up in here. I'm tired of it. High blood pressure medicine. I'm tired of it. So y'all, listen. You can't, listen. You ain't going to be able to please everybody. Now listen to me. You can't please all your children. You can't please everybody in your family. Why don't you be happy sometimes? 
it's okay for you to take a vacation and they mad at you. I care because y'all didn't save money and I did and I'm ready to go and you can't go. That ain't my, I'm not finna be worried about you because you trifling. Okay, I'm gonna be quiet. Y'all quit worrying about stuff now. God trying to multiply you. I'm almost through. I got 15 minutes. Watch it. I'm reading the scripture. That's what I'm doing. I'm reading the scripture. Somebody shout, God, make room. <laughs> now. I like that. Declare a thing. <laughs> now, he said, I will rid the land of wild animals and keep your enemies out of your land. In fact, you will chase down your enemies and slaughter them with your swords. Five of you will chase a hundred. And a hundred of you will chase 10,000. All your enemies will fall beneath your sword. Now, if y'all allow me just to put in context, back then in the New Testament, that's what was happening in the world. I mean, it was literally land and crops and wild animals coming in and eating up their crops and stuff. And all these things were happening now. But now, let me just kind of bring it in our hour now that y'all dealing with demon spirits that's coming in and eating up your stuff. Them demon spirits are even bad habits. I don't want to get into the bad habits. Can anybody tell me a bad habit? See, help me preach. Cussing, bad habit. What else? Procrastination, bad habit. Smoking, bad habit. Huh? The inner me, bad habit. Drinking, worrying, lying, spending money, laziness, gluttony. Chocolate, huh? Judging others. What else? Anything else? Now, now get spiritual. Come on, keep getting spiritual. Anything not good for your soul? Anything gonna affect your heart, your lungs, your kidneys, your blood pressure, your brain? Right? Cause see, a lot of us are carrying stuff that your body ain't supposed to carry. People's livers go out because of all that, uh, what they call that stuff, uh, if you drink a lot, cirrhosis of the liver. Your liver ain't supposed to take all that. <laughs> okay, you slip once, but doggone, your liver suffering because it wasn't supposed to handle all that. Red liquor, I mean brown liquor, clear liquor. <laughs> None of them. <laughs> it ain't supposed to do it. That's why, the, that's why I go out. Because God didn't make it like that. That was, that was the spirit of the enemy to take you out sooner than you're supposed to go. <laughs> okay, I'm, uh, let me get back. Did, did, that, did that make any kind of sense? All right, so somebody shall make room for more. Okay, so, all right, so I look. Verse 9 in the New Living Translation. I will look favorably upon you, making you fertile and multiplying your people. And I will fulfill my covenant with you. You will have such a surplus of crops that you will need to clear out the old grain to make room for the new harvest. How many of y'all are really ready for God to do something new in your life? Are you really ready for that? Now, you got to understand that some old things has got to go, though. I mean, some stuff you really like to do. Some things that, that you know, just some old, some, some old stuff. What's some old stuff, y'all? What's some old stuff? What could be some old stuff that going to have to go for you to get to know? Huh? Huh? Clubbing? <laughs> okay. Gambling? Overspending. Foul tongue. Okay. So all the same, we kind of saying the same thing, right? So when you have not been studying the word like you're supposed to, that old habit got to go. When you ain't been praying to God like you should be praying to God, 
So that, that old habit got to go. You ain't been given to God the way you supposed to. That old habit got to go. That lack of commitment that you have not been having, you let a little bit of stuff get in the way, that's got to go. That means that when you let go of the old stuff, that means now I'm maturing for something greater. God can't give an immature man or woman something great because they won't know how to handle it. You'll be broke. He'll give you 100000 You'll be broke in a week. Go out here buying cars and stuff and get out here and toll it out. Buying clothes and stuff. And then, then you, so you got all these red bottoms and all these nice outfits and stuff. And then also you want to give it away. And then you look up three months later, you ain't got no money. <laughs> You're trying to figure out what happened. Gluttony. No vision. No purpose. Just spending. Just raggedy with your money. Raggedy with your time. Somebody shout, I ain't going to be raggedy no more. Raggedy with your relationship with God. Just raggedy. When you feel like it, then you want to serve him. That ain't right. Somebody shout, that ain't right. Okay, y'all look bored. I'm fit to go. You better make time for God if you want to make room for God. Somebody shout, make time for God. Lord, okay, let me get back to this piece of paper. Make room for the Lord. I pulled over down there on, uh, over on Buck Hannon. And then I wrote, when you sanctify yourself in the Lord, God is making room for you. Let go of old stuff. The old in Christ. Let go of the old things. Huh, okay, I'll just write. Y'all ready to write down this point number two? Write it down. Here it is. Stay sanctified, stay sanctified to remain satisfied. <laughs> it's amazing what God would do to you when you just driving your car. Mind God said, I'm being ready to get in the middle of all you minding your own business. You ever been minding your business? Somebody came in, just got in the way, kind of changed stuff. That's what God get ready to do. He's ready to get in your business. Right when you think you got it all lined up, God said, I'm going to jump in the middle of it. That was my second point, wasn't it, Mama? That was my second point, right? All right, you can't read my handwriting, but that's my second point. <laughs> Y'all ready for this third point? Then we get ready to go. Lorenzo, you ready to hear this? Change habits, changed habits, change futures. So if you change a habit, you can change your future. What kind of habit you need to change, right, Tracy? You change a habit, you can change your future. Have you ever been in a point to where you made a decision, I'm going to fast and pray, and as soon as you start fasting and praying, God start moving. Why? Because you changed your habit, and you just said, wait a minute, I'm going to quit worrying and quit stressing over stuff. I'm going to fast and pray, and I'm going to ask God when he wants me to fast and pray and what he wants me to fast and pray. And when you obey what the word of God says, uh, God says it's at that moment in that time, uh, I'll get ready to change everything you're asking for. The Bible says very clearly, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And when I know that that's what the word says, I got to be confident within my own self that God is talking about me, that I can do all things, uh, not just the preacher, not just the musicians, uh, not just the choir, not just the leaders, not just the ministers. I can do all things. Uh, somebody shout, I can do all things uh, through Christ who strengthens me. And when I know that that same anointing that's on my pastor is on me, you better watch out uh, because I'm getting ready to take my children back. Uh, I'm getting ready to take my joy back. Uh, I'm getting ready to get my peace back because uh, I done messed around and learned how to pray. I, I done messed around and learned how to walk by faith and not by sight because God is a good God. Uh, I don't know if there's any witnesses in the building that would declare that God is a good God. If he can give you a message on a brown piece of paper, imagine what he can do if you sit down and start reading the Bible and start studying the Bible and all the revelation going to come through the Bible. God said, if you just put time in me, I'll put favor on you. That's a word right there. Look at your neighbor and God and tell your neighbor, say, neighbor, if you just put time in God, 
God will show you favor. And I come to tell y'all today, uh, as I get ready to go home on today, uh, that God says you are allowed to return to him. Uh, you got to understand that some of us done messed up uh, and you thought God done forgot about you uh, and God was just so mad at you that he wasn't going to receive you back. Uh, but God told me to tell you out of this book of Leviticus uh, that it's time for you to return to him. Uh, tell your neighbor, say it's time to get back to God. No matter what you had done, uh, and no matter what you had said, uh, no matter what had happened in your life, uh, God said it's time to let it go and return to him. Uh, and you need to quit beating yourself up. Uh, you've been beating yourself up for six months. Uh, you've been beating yourself up for years. Uh, but God said, let it go. Look at your neighbor and shout, let it go. This is a time of kingdom redemption. Uh, this is when God is getting ready to redeem your life. Uh, God said that he sent his son Jesus uh, upon the Christ so that you can have life and have it more abundantly. But I want you to know right now that I've been redeemed. Uh, would you look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, I've been redeemed. Uh, yeah, the word redeemed means uh, I've been won back by God. Uh, the word redeemed means I've been free from the things that I did. Uh, the things that hurt me, God said, I've been free from it. Uh, somebody shout, I've been redeemed. Uh, hallelujah, Jesus. Uh, if there's any redeemed people in the word of God uh, that's in the building today, any redeemed people in the building, uh, you ought to just say, yeah, I'm here. I've been redeemed. Yeah, I'm here. I've been redeemed from my past. I've been brought out of the darkness into the marvelous light. I want y'all to understand maybe you did some disgraceful stuff, but you better know that when you give your life to Jesus, you've been redeemed. God is bringing you back into his fold. The Bible tells me that the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He, listen, y'all, y'all got to understand that Jesus all already paid the price. I've already been redeemed over 2,000 years ago. Matter of fact, I just want to be open with y'all for a moment. Just last uh, two weeks ago, I found out that I had something on my record. I was out there trying to get some stuff. Found out I got a record. I'm like, wait a minute. I was scratching my head trying to figure out what am I doing with a record. Well, when I found out what the record was, there were some people that used my name that I knew nothing about. Out. And I come to tell y'all today, in spite of somebody using my name, I still been redeemed. And whatever it is, God want me to have, I'm going to still get it. Look at your neighbor and tell him whatever it is, God want me to have, I'm still going to get it. Is there anybody in the building that will declare I'm still going to get it? I'm going to still get the house. I'm going to still get it. I'm going to still get the job. I'm going to still get it. I'm going to still get the increase. I'm going to still get it. Somebody shout, I'm going to still get it. What the devil meant for my bad. God getting ready to turn it around for my good. I'm going to still get it. Why, Pastor? Because I've been redeemed. I've been redeemed by the best. I've been forgiven by the best. And I come to tell y'all today, you need to forgive yourself. Put your hand on your chest and say, I forgive myself. I forgive myself for my bad habits. I give, forgive myself for my mistakes. I forgive myself. So I'm going to let go of guilt. I'm going to let go of shame. Listen, Jesus has overcome the world. And so have you. And as I take my seat today, I need y'all to understand all it takes is a piece of paper that will change your life. All it takes is a word from the Lord that will change your life. Cause the Bible says that the steps of a good man, they are ordered by the Lord. Would you just nudge your neighbor and tell him, I am a good man. I ain't always been good, but I'm good now. I'm a good man. I ain't always been where I am now, but I'm still good. I may not look like I used to look, but I'm still good. I used to have a lot of hair. I ain't got none today, but I'm still good. I ain't got everything you got, but I'm still good. Woo! So, as I go home, I need y'all to understand the power of you letting go. 
Make time for God. Then you can make room for God. Stay sanctified so you can remain satisfied. Changed habits change your future. What kind of habits do you need to change? John the Mac Reynolds, he said it. I make now I find space for what I treasure. I make time for what I want. I choose my priorities. And Jesus, you're my number one. Let me say that again. I find space for what I treasure. I make time for what I want. I choose my priorities. Jesus, you're my number one. So if y'all think about the lyrics, that's just the first lyrics. Are you willing to find space for what you treasure? Are you willing to make time for what you want? Will you choose your priorities and make Jesus your number one? It's up to you.